So today we're going to learn about um, neutral atoms. That's the main focus of today's lesson. You're going to be learning or be able to, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain to me what a neutral atom is and be able to recognize the properties of neutral atoms, meaning what's the atomic mass, the atomic number, how many protons, how many neutrons, how many electrons. Okay. First, going to show you here Mendeleev's um, periodic table from 1869. There were only 63 elements that they knew about at that particular time. Scientists to this day are still discovering new elements. Okay, we haven't discovered everything yet. Um, today's uh, periodic table looks a little bit more like this. A lot more complicated than Mendeleev's because we have found out a lot more information about these elements since his time. So now um, this is today's periodic table and we have um, 118 known elements. Not all of them have been named yet um, and we're still finding new. So I mean by the time you're an adult there might be 150 new elements. We, we don't know. Okay? So this is something you need to start becoming familiar with. If you take a look at each of these, um, these elements, they all give us some information, each box. So, for example, let's all look at boron right here. Boron. See it right here? Okay. It has a chemical symbol of what? What's the chemical symbol? B, a capital B. And the element's name is boron. Then we have at the bottom here is the atomic mass, which is a decimal number. And at the top we have our atomic number. That tells us how many protons there are in that neutral atom. Okay? Um, modern day model of the atom, this is what um, we'll be looking at, as well as a Bohr model, but today we're just going to focus on the modern day model. Again, we have our electron cloud. In our electron cloud, we will find our electrons. In the center, there's a very dense and small nucleus. In that nucleus, we have neutrons and we have protons. Protons are positively charged. Um, subatomic particles, electrons are negatively charged, and neutrons have no charge at all. On the right hand side over here, we have what we call a periodic table data box. In that box, it gives us four important pieces of data about every element. The atomic number, the element symbol, the element name, the atomic mass. Now, some of the periodic tables, sometimes the atomic mass is at the top and the atomic number is at the bottom. And they don't have these words here. What's your clue to tell you which one is the mass? Keith? Um, uh, the mass. But if you don't know which one the mass is, what's a clue? One Shannon. number will have a decimal, the other number will be a whole number. Very good. So the one that has a decimal, where you see the decimal numbers, you know, oh, those that's the mass number. So if the, you know, if you find out that the mass is on the bottom on one, all of them will be on the bottom on that particular periodic table. They don't flip it around on, on one periodic table. So if you find the atomic mass is on the bottom, the whole periodic table, all the elements' masses will be on the bottom of that box. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so how do you figure out how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in a neutral atom? We're going to use these periodic table data boxes, okay? And those are going to give us the information that we need in order to figure each one out. So what I want you to do is I want you to copy down this question, 
copy down these three statements and make yourself an iron periodic table data box on in your notes and then we're going to discuss that all right in order to find the number of protons you're always going to look at the atomic number and it's always a whole number on the periodic table the number of electrons equals the number of protons so if you once you figure out the number of protons in a neutral atom that equals the number of electrons as well okay we're going to find out the new number of neutrons we have to go through a little bit of a process we have to take this atomic mass and we have to round it to the nearest whole number now yesterday we talked about rounding nearest whole numbers we have to look at the first digit past the decimal if it's a 0 through 4 that number stays the same if it's a 5 to a 9 we round up so in this case what are we going to do we're going to round up so the number the mass is what 56 okay so we've rounded to the nearest whole number now we subtract the atomic number what's the atomic number 26 so if we subtract 26 what are we going to get 30. 30. So we have 30 neutrons. It's that simple. Just a little bit of math, and you got the number of neutrons. Okay? Alright. Alright. Oops. Moving forward, let's do some practice now. So write these boxes into your notebook. Okay, I left off the names. Because the names at this point, as, as we're trying to find subatomic particles, the name is not so important at this point. So we have what number is on the top of these boxes? What's that number stand for? What information is it? Number of What's its official name? Atomic number. So this is our atomic number. This is what? Atomic mass. That's atomic mass. Now, in order to find the number of protons, we look at the atomic number. So, I'm going to ask you to, on your paper, draw these out and answer how many of each do we have. So, go ahead and do that on your paper now. And then we'll see how uh, how well you're doing. We'll do these two first. All right. So the first one for beryllium, we have an atomic number of four. Okay. So atomic number tells us how many protons we have. So yes, we do have four protons. What's the rule about electrons? They equal what? The number of protons. So if we know there's four protons, we also know that there are four electrons. And then to find the atomic or to find the number of neutrons, we have to take that atomic mass and round it. What number are we going to round that to? Nine. Then what are we going to do? Subtract the what? Nine from four. Subtract the atomic number, which is four. Nine minus four gives us? Five. We have five neutrons. All right, let's do sodium. Na. So we have how many protons? Okay. Eleven. Eleven. We got, we got that because we looked at the atomic number. Electrons is 11 because we know protons and electrons equal each other. Neutrons, we took the atomic mass. mass we rounded it to what? 23. 23. We subtracted what? 11. because that's the atomic no. number. And it gives us what? 12 neutrons. 12 neutrons. Excellent. Let's move on to the next two. All right. 
What's the P stand for? What's the name of that element? Anybody? Phosphorus. Excellent. So phosphorus has what as an atomic number? 15 is its atomic number, so that tells us what? 15 protons. How many electrons will it have? 15, because protons equals number of electrons in neutral atoms. And then we got to figure out neutrons. We take the atomic mass, round it to the nearest whole number, which gives us 31 minus 15, which is the atomic number. That gives us 16 neutrons. You guys are getting it. This is awesome. All right, let's try. Let's try argon. The atomic number is 18. That gives us 18 protons. We also get 18 electrons because these two, they equal each other in neutral atoms. Look at the atomic mass. What are we going to round that to? 40. 40. 40 minus the atomic number, which was 18, gives us what? 22. 22 neutrons. Awesome. So here's, you know, a current um, periodic table. Here's another one. This is an interactive one that I like using in class quite a bit. This periodic table helps us to really understand that there are something called groups and there's something called periods. You have to define this in your homework. We have period 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Those are the rows. If you want to write that in your notes right now, period is the, are the rows going across the periodic table. Periods are the rows that are going across the periodic table. So here we have period 1, period 2, period 3, period 4, period 5, 6, and 7. Periods are the rows that go across the periodic table. Then we have something called groups. Groups are the columns. And they usually are numbered by Roman numerals. We have group 1, group 2. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, actually, this is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, this is 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So the groups are the columns of the periodic table. Seven periods, 18 groups. Okay? And I, on this one, you can actually tap on any one of these, and it will tell you everything that you need to know about them. Okay? Okay? So in this case, on this um, periodic table, where is the atomic number? On the bottom. Very good. And they've already rounded our masses for us. This is the mass for this element. Lithium is 6.941, and they've already rounded it for us to the nearest whole number. Okay? Go ahead and take out your worksheet. Make sure your name, hour, and date is at the top of it. You have a packet, and today we're just going to focus on that very first page. Even though it says page four at the bottom, it is the first page of the element or of the packet. So the first atomic symbol that we're looking at is B. So we can go back and look at our periodic table and find B, which is in which period? Period two, very good. It's in the second row. You got hydrogen and helium are that first period. And there's only two elements in that first period. 
The second period only has a few in there as well. So here we have boron over here. So when we're looking for the information, we want to know the atomic number, number of protons, number of neutrons, electrons, and what is its atomic mass. When you write the atomic mass, I want you to write it as the, the whole number. Don't give me the decimal number for the mass. I want you to work on practicing rounding, okay? Whether it stays at that whole number or it rounds up to the next whole number. So let's do boron together. So boron has an atomic number of what? Five. So write that on your worksheet. It has an atomic number of five. So how many protons will it have? Five. How many electrons will it have? Five. It says it has six neutrons. How could we get figure out the atomic mass without even going back? We can add our protons and our neutrons together to get 11, but let's go back and double check to make sure that that's what the answer would have been. Let's look at boron. It's 10.811. That 8 tells us to do what? Round up. round up. So we did some simple math and we did it backwards, which is okay. Always double check your math. This one says it has an atomic number of 11 and atomic mass rounded to 24. So what uh, element has an atomic number of 11? Sodium. Sodium. Excellent. Some of you are finding these quick. There it is. So we'll go back. And we know sodium, so it's Na, right at the symbol. Second letter is always lowercase. First letter is capital, second is always lowercase. How many protons will it have? Eleven. How many electrons? Eleven. How many neutrons? Thirteen. Thirteen, we find that out because we say, okay, we got 24 as the mass. We subtract the number of protons. 24 minus 11 gives us 13. How are we doing on this? All right, let's do one more together. So the next one says there's 31 protons. So if, what's our clue? What should we be looking for? 31. Atomic number of 31. Gallium. What period is it in? Period four. four. Excellent. Excellent. All right, there it is. So we have a, a atomic number of 31. What's the uh, atomic mass rounded? 70. 70. Okay. So we have, I'm sorry, oh, GA. Almost forgot what we just did. Okay, and it had the atomic number 31. Now, we can't put 70 there because we know it says this. So it must have lost um, a couple of neutrons, right? So we we're going to add these two together to get the atomic mass this time. 31 plus 37 is? 68. 68. So this one was an isotope also, as well as this one. So go by the numbers on here, OK? It's good practice. How many electrons should there be? How many electrons? 31. All right. So now that you've had some time to go through, I did write isotope along the margin there of the ones that are isotopes, which means that those particular um, elements have been either given extra neutrons or had neutrons taken away. And that's a type of, of an, or an atom called an isotope. They're a little bit different than neutral atoms because the number of neutrons have changed, which has changed the mass, and that's why the mass number will be different than from what is given to you on the periodic table. So go ahead and check your answers, make sure that you got these right, and then I want you to start working on the next page, which is called Neutral Atoms Worksheet, and that is due on Monday.